All right. Well, you know what? We are at six. So as uh, as those uh, sort of answers are uh, trickling in about where folks are uh, are joining us from, I'm going to get this thing uh, kicked off and started. So uh, super excited to uh, to welcome Kayer and uh, Sudi to lead our presentation for today. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run through our intro slides here real quick. These are uploaded on the Meetup site right now, but um, we've already uh, had some chats uh, along the way here. I um, was having a good chat with uh, Gary before, uh, before some other folks showed up about uh, Power Automate Desktop, which was announced at Ignite for free, and, um, and that looks like a really promising pl program to play around with, so something else to keep in mind here. Uh, we're in our welcome and overview right now. Let's take about five minutes, and then we're going to kick it off for a feature presentation on increasing productivity with Office add-ins and scripts, so it's going to be some cool stuff here. Um, I think, uh, Kayer, I, I assume that you guys are going to introduce yourselves as you go through this thing. Um, yeah, cool. Yep. In that case, I'll, uh, I'll keep that to a dull roar right near the end here for my introduction to you guys. Um, I do want to just throw out a big uh, thanks for, um, it's for the sponsors that actually help put all this stuff together. So uh, these meetups are hosted by XL Guru, which is my company, and uh, Skillwave, which is our training division. Um, we've got some really cool news coming from Skillwave uh, tomorrow. So uh, if you're not on our email list there, you should be, uh, you should be signing up for it because we've got, uh, let's say, there's a big, a big announcement that's going to be coming. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, I also um, want to throw out a big, uh, a big hat tip to Microsoft, who helps us out immensely with a lot of things, including, you know, today providing us with two speakers for our meetup, which is a pretty awesome uh, contribution, obviously, um, for amongst the many other things that, uh, that Microsoft helps us with. Lastly, um, I do want to throw a shout out that even though this doesn't really tie into tonight's topic from an Office script side of things, um, when we talk about Office add-ins and whatnot, um, I actually have a, uh, an add-in for building better data model models faster uh, using my Monkey Tools add-in. If you haven't checked that out, uh, please do so. If you're doing any amount of dimensional modeling in Excel, I think you'll find that it's a, an incredibly worthwhile tool. Our next meetups that we have coming up, I actually need to announce not two, but three. So um, next, we are two weeks from now um, at 10 p.m. On, our, on the West Coast here. We have Imke Feldman joining us. She is going to be doing a, a brand new talk of hers on mastering recursions with list.generate and list.accumulate and Power Query with minimal coding. This is going to be super cool. I'm really looking forward to this. One big, there's two notes about this one. Number one, it starts really late. And number two, Imke's presentation will not be recorded. We will be recording the What's New in Power BI, but we won't be recording Imke's presentation. Uh, the reason being, it's her first run. She wants to get this one right. She tells us she will be given a recording on that one later, um, and we'll make sure that people know. But if you want to see the brand new hot off the presses, uh, you got to be there in order to, uh, to catch this one live. Two weeks later, April 8th, um, we're looking forward to welcoming a first-time speaker, Al Chen. He's going to be showing us a different scripting method. We're using good old classic VBA um, in order to fill down values down. Now, you guys have probably seen me do this with Power Query. Uh, Al's going to show us a different option. And in order to throw an additional wrinkle in this, um, I think he's actually not going to use Windows. He's going to use Mac Excel for this. So there's a whole another sort of, you know, different little angle to that. So it's going to be kind of an interesting uh, little component along the way there. So um, I'd highly encourage you to come along and, uh, and check out Al and give him some support for, uh, for say, his, uh, his first engagement with us. Um, that would be really appreciated. Now, the third one that I want to announce is actually a meetup that is going to be coming a month after all this. I'm super excited to be welcoming my good friend Oz de Soleil. And Oz is going to be coming and giving us a very, uh, let's put it this way, non-standard, non-business focused um, meetup time here. What we're going to be doing with Oz is we're going to be doing something similar to the show Chopped, um, where we're kind of the Excel hash thing, where the readers get to pick three magic ingredients that Oz has to put together. And we're kind of looking for things that don't normally fit together. So there is a survey here at forms.office.com where you can actually go and contribute the wild and wonderful things you'd like to see Oz try and put together. We're going to announce the magic ingredients at our next meetup. So right before Al takes the stage, we'll tell Oz what he's going to be working with. And then Oz has got uh, some time to go and actually put those together. And what's going to happen in his meetup is he's going to share not only the solutions that he's built, but he's also going to share the creativity process that he took in order to come up with the solutions that he did build. So this is actually more of an exercise in creativity and thinking outside the box 
trying to add some fun and flair to what we actually do rather than focusing 100% on business all the time. So we'll be sending out an email link to this a little bit later on to try and get people engaged on that survey. Um, so if you're interested, uh, please help us out with that one. Uh, if you haven't taken the Excel user group survey for Microsoft, please do that as well. I believe we've sent out an email link on that, but uh, if you haven't, we'd definitely like to get your input there. And um, we are still looking for a speaker for our April 22nd meetup. No, we're not. We actually have this one. Uh, oh, hang on. Nope, I'm wrong. We're looking for someone to take on the what's new in Power BI portion. I should totally read my slides. Uh, Joseph's going to be doing the feature presentation. He usually does our what's new. So if you're interested in taking on the what's new in Power BI, so you've got about a 15-minute, 20-minute slot on what's new for that month, um, please email Rebecca, let her know, and, uh, and we'd love to actually have someone be able to take that on because it'd just be really unfair to make Joseph actually have to do the what's new and uh, feature presentation as well, right? So um, anyway, if you're interested in helping us out, please let us know. Uh, again, another chance to get on to the R stage, um, you know, with a, a short sort of uh, stint on this one here, um, just to try it out. So we'd love to have you. Uh, finally, if you'd like to do a full length presentation, we have a survey here that we'd love you to fill out. And on that note, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to go, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to turn it over to uh, Kayer and Sudi. Um, I'm super, super excited to, uh, to have both these gentlemen with us here. Uh, I've known them both for, uh, uh, well, years, quite some time. Um, the, uh, I know Kayer, uh, man, I think probably the first time we met must have been about, is it like eight years ago or something like that? And Sudi probably about yeah. six or so. Yeah. So, That's yeah. True known each other for a long time. They've always been uh, in the Excel world as far as I'm aware because, uh, I mean, nobody's really born until they get into Excel, right? And um, they've worked on a lot of different things and I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, what you guys have to show us tonight. So the floor is yours, guys. I'm going to turn off my camera and I'm going to mute everybody else's mics. I'm going to let it uh, go for you. All right, great. So I'm going to start sharing my screen. Work. Can't. Uh, not quite seeing it yet. There we so go. Now know. we're good. All right. Cool. All right. Well. Um, Thank you everyone for joining today. We're super, super excited to be here with you and uh, spending this evening or this morning or the afternoon with you, wherever you are. We're here to talk about how you can increase your productivity with Office add-ins and Office scripts. One of the cool features in PowerPoint Designer is it should recommends different um, slides. And so I think Sudi picked out this one which was great and it makes me really, really excited and yet kind of sad that we're not in this boat or, uh, today of just working together, being back together um, and we're working more collaboratively. So just a few quick intros. Uh, Sudi, do you wanna uh, do a quick intro then I'll go? Yeah, sure. Um... My name is Sudhi Ramamurthy, um, part of the Office platform team, uh, Excel team. And uh, I've been with Microsoft for like, I think over five or six years now. Uh, I live in Redmond, pretty close to the campus. You know, I would boast uh, and brag about my driving distance, which is about five minutes with all my colleagues and friends and make them jealous. Uh, but now I don't get to do that because, you know, I'm no longer driving. So hopefully at some point I'll get that benefit back. Um, so, um, yeah, so I'm, I've am i been with uh, with the Office Platform team and worked on various aspects, add-in now with Office Scripts. So really excited to be part of uh, this discussion. Um, I feel like with every in-person meeting that we miss, I need like a four or five online meeting to substitute. So any opportunity we get is awesome to talk about our product. So thank you, uh, Ken and the organizations that are supporting this. Uh, so we look forward to this conversation. Cool. Yeah, and um, my name's Kayer. I've uh, lived and breathed uh, Excel throughout my career. I just graduated college, joined the Excel team 
as a software tester about 15 years ago, switched to become a product manager. And then for a short stint, I wanted to move back to the East Coast and uh, left the company. And for two years, I joined as a developer. I was working at this um, financial software company and we're building software for banks and accountants. And most of what I did was actually building software on top of Office and on top of Excel. Um, so even when I left, I couldn't es escape it. Um, and then I missed it so much where I realized, hey, well, why not just embrace it? So here I am back. Um, been back uh, on the at Microsoft for about five years, working uh, really closely with Sudi and team. And um, really our, our mission has been how we can bring productivity forward. Uh, when you think about Excel, it's one of the greatest software products ever. Um, and I'm probably speaking to the choir because everyone here already understands that. And when we think about uh, increasing productivity and um, extending Excel and customizing it so it's deeper and it meets your needs, it, it's it's been a journey because hey, Excel for the past 35 years, you could always extend it in some regard. And what we're going going to be talking to you about today is how you can now extend it using modern Office add-ins and Office scripts. So what I'm next card. Right. So here we are today in terms of the challenges we're all experiencing worldwide in terms of modern work. There's just so much data. There's just a increasing time demand. Um, and I can't promise, but I have told my kids not to come in here, but they, did, they typically tend not to listen. So they may be wandering in, um, especially like as we're working uh, remotely. And so I, I was one of the people that Sudi would uh, brag about uh, his commute to, because I used to have an hour commute into the office. Um, <laughs> but now, hey, we, everything's uh, remote and collaborative. And, and with, with everything becoming more and more digital, there's just a increased need for uh, protection and um, protecting your data, protecting access to it. And so this is where Office add-ins and Office scripts can help. A, when we think about uh, Office add-ins, which I'll talk about first, um, there's different benefits. And within Excel specifically, I always think around, hey, really cool add-ins that help you get your data, uh, discover new insights, manage risk, and ultimately tell better stories. Uh, Ken's monkey tools add-in example is a is a great one uh, at that. When at the same time, when we think about uh, what we're going to talk to you today, uh, which we call internally uh, or differentiate by calling them Office Web add-ins to developers, um, these add-ins are a um, are a new model or an evolution of the existing uh, add-in models uh, that previously existed. And what these add-ins do is they essentially let stay with you in whatever context you're in. So for when we speak to developers where I spend most of my day uh, talking to, uh, we tell them, hey, you can actually just write your code once and have it run anywhere. But for you as a power user of, of Excel, this means, hey, you acquire an add-in, on desktop, and then let's say you're saving your file on OneDrive and you click a link and it opens in the browser, well, you can still use that add in there. Or uh, in the context of Teams or on your Mac, um, it's all just one consistent experience. The other thing with these Office add-ins, um, the add-ins of yesterday or that, that still exist today, um, but that were built on uh, or comm technologies, one of the things you would realize is if you had a bunch of those add-ins installed where a lot of power users did, they would see um, Excel just wait in the splash screen. 
uh, way as you loaded each individual add-in. And so now with uh, this add-in model, Excel just opens uh, right away and these add-ins uh, load asynchronously. Likewise, when we run operations, these add-ins don't really block um, the user from doing control with Excel because they are running um, in parallel. Our, the, one of the reasons why we call them the Office Web Add-in Model um, it is because they're powered by web technologies and they're actually hosted uh, on the web. And one of the benefits that you get as a user is you don't really need to worry about installing updates anymore. Uh, if the developer makes a change, uh, if there's a new update, uh, you get it right away. And then th these add-ins are also easy to acquire and we'll demo how you can get these in uh, these add-ins from the store. At the same time, we've also enhanced security um, with, the, with these add-ins, making sure, hey, they only have access to what they need. Uh, the add-ins in the store go through a validation uh, process, and we give I IT admins control to pick and choose certain add-ins that they want to make available uh, in their organizations. So with that, I'm going to dive into some demos. Okay. Stop my video. Don't mess with Danny. So, um, for this demo, I'm going to be Adele, who uh, is an analyst who works um, with um, Megan. And every week, um, we work together to send out a sales report. And it's my job to ensure that a, the data um, that we have is clean and accurate. And so uh, it's that time of the week again, and it's time for me to go and review um, review the sales report before we go send it out. Before we send it out, and I've, so I've uh, I'm in my Outlook, and I've received a mail from Megan wh where she's tagged me on certain comments. So what I can do is I can just go to one of these comments, and um, this will load on Excel for Web. I'm going to have to bear with my bandwidth as this opens. And so here uh, Excel has opened and we, we now have a few things for me to go uh, and verify. So nor, I, I see a couple of places where, OK, I need to go and make sure, hey, this data is accurate, so Megan can send out um, her report. Actually, if I'm looking at the wrong sheet, uh, here we are. So there's a few things that are flagged for me here uh, that Megan has added. Um, the hey, make sure I add some valid invoice dates. Uh, make sure things are accurate. And now uh, this is a small data set, but normally I would be dealing with lots and lots of rows of data. And um, I may be doing these operations frequently. So uh, this is where add-ins can help. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and get an, get a couple of add-ins that will help me. So I'll click on Insert. And in Excel for Web, uh, there's this Insert Office Add-ins icon. So when I click on this, uh, this will open the Office Add-ins uh, store. So we can see a couple of add-ins that I already already have. There is also, um, as I mentioned, IT admins can go and deploy these add-ins. So in my organization, I spend a lot of time managing projects uh, within the Jira cloud. I look at my portfolios, my team's portfolios uh, with Refinitive. And then um, our finance team does a lot of their um, budgeting and financial planning um, using our, our company's data that's stored in uh, the SAP Analytics Cloud. And so all of these add-ins are important to my work, and so the IT has already deployed those to me. So for me as a user, I didn't really have to do anything to get these add-ins. They just appeared just by me simply opening up Excel. And then this last tab is the store tab. And within the store tab, 
you can find different add-ins um, that you can acquire and use uh, for whatever your needs are. There's different categories here. Um, and so there's some, some fun ones. So the web video player, Aiken, if you ever want to put all of your um, all of your YouTube videos from these uh, power user meetups in one big Excel file, this add-in will let you go and do that. Um, <laughs> there's add-ins that help. Yeah. <laughs> um, recently, I heard uh, Elon uh, Musk had tweeted about uh, Bitcoin and uh, Dodge coins, and so here's an add-in that helps you pull in uh, real cryptocurrency information. Um, so different add-ins, you can send text messages from Excel, you have your computer read, read data. So there's different add-ins available. Uh, going back to our scenario, <clears throat> one of the things I wanted to do is uh, just get an add-in that will help me work with some of these dates a bit more, given that I tend to do this frequently. So what I'm gonna do is search for the uh, mini calendar and date picker. Uh, added. And this will add this, which uh, essentially adds a mini calendar to my spreadsheet. And um, I do get access to understanding what the terms and conditions of that and are. So I click continue. And this now inserts a calendar within, within my sheet. Now, one of the things um, that we said before was, hey, these add-ins um not only work in in web uh they follow you where you go so if i were to go and open this in the desktop app so i'll click open and excel will load up there we go and so normally, like I am going to, we'll see a uh, few add-ins, but this is opening up the file. Okay. So. All right, there we go. So Excel um, has loaded, um, and now I can continue my work. And so that add-in that I had acquired previously is available here. Now, I was going to tell you how fast Excel load, loaded, uh, which uh, was happening uh, prior to uh, this um, this this session, um, and one of the things there was <clears throat> you when the Excel splash screen was up. Normally, you would have seen, hey, loading the SAP add-in, loading the Refinitive add-in, loading the Jira add-in, loading the Text Toolkit add-in, but we didn't really see that uh, because these add-ins are loaded asynchronously. So they don't affect boot time. Um, apparently, network traffic does affect boot time. <laughs> so back into this scenario, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, use this add-in to go and just work with dates inside of Excel. So I'll just uh, fill out a couple of dates here. Um, let's go back and fill out this one. Um, so now that I have this, I can also use this add-in to visualize these dates uh, a bit more, just to make sure, hey, these invoices are correct. So I'll click on this uh, settings. I'm going to select this uh, column of data or this range and click highlight range of dates. And once I do that, I can, I can just at a glance see uh, all the different uh, dates that I've had my invoices selected. So this helps me really quickly spot check if I have missing data. And it does appear that, oh, wait a minute, I don't have any invoices for my business the week of March 1st. So this will allow me to go and say, okay, did, did we just not have any sales that week? 
or are we missing something? Uh, another thing as I'm working through this that I noticed is um, the invoice IDs, um, there seems to be a, a bug in my data where, hey, normally it's just the invoice number. I'm not sure why this, this week we have these uh, letters in front of it. So I'm gonna use another add-in, and this time I'm gonna use this add-in called the text toolkit. And so I've already acquired this add-in, so I have that toolkit button in my ribbon. Um, get a call out. And I can skip this. And so there's different uh, capabilities here, and it just helps me work with text. And so here I'm gonna go say, hey, I just wanna extract the numbers out of uh, column A. So I'll click extract text, and I think so. I've done this before. It's already set to extract numbers, and I am just going to click insert these results. And it, I can choose to just insert the results as static values, or I can also uh, choose to insert it as a formula. And so let's do that. So once I click insert, a new column gets added. And a and what this add-in did was it actually wrote a formula into the grid, which parsed um, the string and extracted out the numbers. Now this is the Excel Power Users Group, so I'm sure uh, folks seeing this formula probably have better ways <laughs> of doing this. And so if you do, um, please check out this add-in and let me know. We can definitely pass it to the to the developer of this add-in. All right, so this was just a quick tour of um, different add-ins that you could do. And uh, one of the add-ins that I sh uh, highlighted, so back into um, the store dialog. So on desktop or on Windows or Mac, the way you get to it is you click insert and then there's this get add-ins button. And so another add-in that I've acquired and so very, very shameless plug. Uh, this is an add-in I built years back, um, and it allows you to uh, visualize different regions on a map. And so um, let's say, uh, so here's an example of that. And um, in this add-in, you have different maps to choose from. So. When I first launched this years ago, um, yeah, I only had the USA and world, and I got a bunch of people leaving uh, reviews for us, for me, say, hey, we need more regions and more countries. And so uh, last year, one of the cool things that Microsoft lets us do is uh, we do um, quarterly uh, fix, hack, learn weeks where we get to choose how, to, how we want to spend our time. And so I spent some time actually adding a map of Canada and a few others uh, continents as well as a couple of cities here to go and check out. So here uh, we have the map of Canada and a uh, quick simple visualization here. And so hopefully after watching this um, video, we'll get a few more fans uh, for the Excel Power, Power User Group within the British Columbia region. So if we get like 500 more fans, um, I can go and update this. And here's another example of the, as your data changed, the map went and I uh, updated. So that's a brief tour of, um, of add-ins. And what I also wanna do is just go back uh, to this particular scenario that we've had and <clears throat> just highlight a sales report or what the final um, result uh, would be. Um, so let's say, hey, once I've cleaned my data, this can, uh, uh, Megan over here can use uh, Office scripts and automate the creation of this report and send it out to our management uh, team to review on a weekly basis and a um, Sudi is gonna be talking us and taking us through the awesome new world of Office Scripts. All right, so uh, do you want me to stop sharing? Uh, yes, I will start presenting on my desktop here.
let me turn off the video because it that seems to help. All right. Um, OK, so uh, what I want to do now is to kind of talk about the Office Scripts product, uh, but also, you know, behind the scene kind of talk about uh, some of the points that uh, Kayer alluded to, uh, both in terms of his like uh, his presentation, uh, but also some of like the activities that you may have observed. Uh, the thing that I wanted to call out there is like you probably saw that he started out his presentation um, by opening up an email. Well, like email again doesn't have anything to do with Excel directly, but it was a way for him to uh, kind of you know, come into his work day and then realize, uh, you know, well, his character in Adele in this case, and realize that hey, there is some some amount of work that I need to do, or some something requires my um, personal attention. So that was called out uh, as part of the natural uh, way that uh, Adele works, and that's via email. So that's how we all uh, operate these days. You know, emails text messages, um, teams. So those are all kind of our collaboration tools. Um, but the way um, we helped that scenario layout was like Adele started out with an email that took directly to the specific place that required Adele's attention uh, and then directly take into the word context where using these add-ins, Adele was able to complete the workflow and, um, and then make sure that uh, you know she didn't really have to do anything the report just showed up so what i want to talk about right now is some of the underlying technology that powered that workflow and also introduce you to um, office scripts as part of that so hey me... sudi uh, we're not seeing your screen right now so you may want to check on that part oh okay all right uh, I, I don't think i went i wasn't showing anything much so let me stop sharing and reshare again here So hopefully you can see this now. Yep, that's better. Thank you. OK, all right. So the the product or the feature that I want to talk about today is Office Scripts. Um, and unlike Office add-ins, this is a fairly new product. So new feature within Excel. Um, so in addition to introducing the feature, I'll be you know, shamelessly asking for your feedback in specific areas where we are uh, focusing our growth in. So um, our mission at Office Scripts is to empower Office users to you know, easily automate their tasks that you just saw, for instance, and uh, process to run their business efficiently uh, anytime and anywhere. So this is really the key for us. Like we want the automation to um, to be carried out from different places at different times using various other business criteria that you may have across all the platforms. Now the feature itself was introduces uh, as a public preview feature uh, about a year ago, like a little bit more than a year ago. And since then, we've been kind of slowly accumulating feedback and adding features on top of it. Uh, so we do have ambitious goals of expanding this product, but right now this is in uh, Excel online. So um, when we think of office automation, this is sort of the mental model that we have. You know, Excel offers various modes of um, automation um, at the bottom you'll recognize uh, the the add-in framework uh, that allows either com add-in or the web add-in that we just saw this is really meant for uh, pro developers and isvs who are creating solutions for on behalf of a client or you know they have a software that they package and uh, distribute to the the customer so it's really uh, more of a structured and packaged solution based uh, solution that Pro devs are appealed towards. Um, and on the top side of things, we have the kind of the end user approachable technologies. Uh, the VBA that is, you know, we're all familiar with, that's been around for a long time. Um, and as we look at sort of the left hand side of things, um, the VBA and the com base, uh, more sort of desktop or individual focused, right? Um, it's very flexible, quite powerful, uh, but at the same time, 
it is offered on uh, only certain uh, uh, certain platforms. And also um, connecting the comma VBA technologies to other parts of your organization is always a bit of a challenging task, which is you've got to know like how these operations or, or how these applications interact with each other and um, taking Excel automation in places where use, users are uh, using their business apps and on a day to day basis always a challenge. Um, it seems like there's always sort of some form of additional level of um, knowledge base that you need uh, to integrate into the uh, the other parts of your workforce. So the office scripts is really kind of helping solve that part of the matrix here. One, we want to make this very much a end user focused automation, so it's easy to learn, low barrier for people to understand and get started out with, but at the same time make it uh, more collaboration friendly, more uh, cross platform and online friendly. Um, so it may not offer all the APIs that you're used to and all the features and capabilities that you're used to with the VPA, but it offers all the most important one as well as it, the goal is to really make it easy for you to collaborate with other parts of your business um, and also do it in a way that you know you can address this in an in-app scenario as well as somebody is not sitting in front of Excel, which we call the unattended scenario as well. So those are sort of how we are positioning Office Scripts product as. Um, so just a little bit more um, introduction about Office Scripts. So it's really a new admin managed and um, a collaborative friendly feature uh, in Excel that allows you to our end users to automate their tasks. Um, and the key is like it offers the recording um, and allows you to customize your actions just, just like VBA macro. Um, and the second point is it enables both in-app and offline automation. So when I say offline, which means that a, you know, a user is not necessarily sitting in front of the, the Excel app to drive some of these automations. So if you want to take the same automation you build in in-app and make it easy for you to run in, in an offline mode uh, in a, in a well-orchestrated and um, in in ways that administrators are happy or, or they consent to those kind of experiences. Uh, and then, yeah, really like it helps you connect with the rest of your organizations. So it's in beta stage, so we're working hard towards making um, the next step, which is to you know bring it to the general availability stage. So in terms of the core features, and I'll, and I'll walk you through the actual uh, application uh, so it offers uh, the automate tab within Excel for online. So if you're familiar with Excel, like there's a new automate tab in Excel online that shows up. Uh, and it offers the, the recorder and the script browser. And this is a way to get, get your recording going and then see the script in, in a browser, uh, in an editor, inbuilt editor that you can actually easily use. There's no configuration required, nothing to install. It's like you know, two or three clicks away from actually getting you to a productive stage. Uh, and then you can also share scripts. Um, you can access scripts that are shared with your colleagues. And I'll point out a couple of key differences when it comes to VBA and, and macros with respect to sharing and, and how scripts can be used for collaboration purpose. Uh, and then we work really hard to make the um, access to APIs very simple which is we worked on a, like a simplified API model uh, that doesn't require you to be an expert um, in the, the JavaScript TypeScript technology. So this is a quite easy to get started out with, um, though add-ins of APIs offer a lot of flexibility, but it also comes with sort of that additional knowledge requirement that you need to know some parts of asynchronous programming and web aspects, whereas this is really fine tuned towards users who may not have like a computer science background, right? Um, so this is ideally suitable for people who want to start out with little simple steps and learn and build their knowledge base. So those are the core features. Um, I mentioned briefly about uh, admin control. What we mean by that is um, an administrator at the tenant level can enable, disable office scripts. By default, it is enabled, but they can choose specific individuals or groups to enable access, so it gives them final level control. And even with it, so the vision that we have is that any 
you know, major feature that we introduce within Office scripts can also be controlled using um, administrator controls. So here, like we see sharing as one of the core, you know, um, feature uh, that administrators may have want to have control with. Uh, so sharing of scripts are also uh, controlled using the same kind of controls, but at a like a sub feature level. So you can have, for instance, Office scripts access, but you or some group may or may not have um, sharing access based on how the administrator has provided access to. And there are other places where administrator can also get to understand what type of activities are happening around these office scripts. So giving visibility to end user is like one of the core, uh, you know, giving access and control uh, as well as visibility is one of the core goals of office scripts. Uh, and then lastly, the, the feature that I, um, that my favorite features is part of um, Office Scripts framework, which is to use the scripts along with Power Automation. So Power Automate is, um, it basically allows you to create flows, workflows within your organization. Again, it's sort of end user focus. So an individual can create workflows to manage the repetitive tasks. Um, and that is the exact technology we used here to uh, enable the demo that we just showed. Uh, so you can trigger it. Um, right from Excel or have a separate application where you can configure your conditions and we're going to take a look at that as well. So uh, so really it kind of helps take your scripts to uh, an offline mode. That means you can take the same script packages into uh, uh, another workflow uh, that I'm showing here. For instance, there is a recurring uh, trigger that is uh, set up to run the script and you know, take that output and post it onto a, a, an adaptive card. So it's sort of like a really simple workflow, but you know, as you can see, uh, a person without any knowledge of how Teams operate can simply connect your output from Excel into a Teams channel. Um, so you don't need to look at like any libraries. You don't need to look at the interfaces or APIs. So this is like click, drag and drop type of an interface. But the core advantage here is that now we can integrate Excel right in the middle of your workflow um, in a way that wasn't possible before. You could have done this before, but you could only do like you know very little things like adding a row or, or reading a table and things like that. But now you can actually do more advanced things like custom functions or um, sorry, condition formatting or data validation or adding a comment like we saw. So that's really like a cool and powerful feature. And this is one of my most favorite feature um, when I work uh, on product like I always try to show this capability. Um, so with that, I'm going to kind of showcase the application live. So I'm going to exit out of the PowerPoint and switch over to this uh, uh, demo tenant. So this is sort of a, a pre version of the file that Kair was looking into. Kair was looking into a file that had like some comments and data highlights. So how did that come about? So imagine you're in, you know, put yourself in Megan's shoe and your task is to go inform Adele that, hey, look, every morning you have this work to do. Uh, but uh, Megan is not a computer science major. She's not a, a programmer. So the way she would go about doing this is to uh, take advantage of the inbuilt controls uh, within Excel to get started out with. So here, you know, you can head over to Automate tab um, and discover these uh, functionality. There is also a search feature, so you can do Automate, uh, and then it shows up these features. And we really want to use the Excel search capability as a way to provide more shortcuts. And I have a short survey that I'll provide a link to in the Teams chat. Um, we're seeking more you know, information around, hey, what would be useful for you as an end user to see uh, additional capabilities that relate in relation to Office scripts that you want to surface. At this point, we have limited capability. Like right now, we can, you know, we can record scripts or all scripts, which is a way to see all your scripts. So I'm going to start out with with the recording. So the journey that Megan took was to say, hey, I don't know how to add a comment. I don't know how to highlight, but I'm going to do this just like as a trial basis. And you can go like one of these cells and and just go insert. Uh, add a comment. Uh, so review, I'll say add a comment. I'm going to add mention 
a day. So this will take care of um, the, the, the notification part. So please review uh, and, and mark this. And so that was recorded. The action recorder tells you what you're recording. And then now we can like go in there and, and highlight that particular cell. So that got highlighted. Yes, this is not on the right cell, but it gives Megan a way to um, get started out with. So you can stop recording uh, and then um, you know edit the script. Uh, I just want to quickly call out a couple of additional features where you can also um, share the script with a colleague, like if you want somebody else. Uh, the scripts themselves are not part of the workbook. They are stored in, in a separate uh, OneDrive folder that we have, uh, you know, it's a dedicated folder under documents, office scripts. So these are all the same scripts that you see here um, in in my um, my library here. So it's not attached to the workbook, and hence the way to uh, share this with a colleague would be to like go in here and, and share the script with a, a colleague. But here in this case. You can go here um, and then it is the, the the code editor is built right within the application, so you don't need to really install anything or go anywhere. So this is built right within. Uh, you can also access through automate. You can do a quick access here for all the scripts that are shared. We've shipped some sample scripts to help you get started with, and then you can also use the all scripts, which opens this site pane where you can quickly access all your scripts. Um, so this was a recorded script. It's converted into instructions so this language is typescript so this is like a super set of javascript that allows you to not only uh, write your code in javascript but also annotate this uh, using types so here for instance there's a main function which is the entry point and that gets a workbook argument and that is sort of your top of the level hierarchical object and using which you can use the code editor to explore and um, you know uh, access the apis that you need the other cool feature is like uh, show like when I when I do a dot here, I get auto completion. Um, so if you don't know how to you know use an API, you could just like select that and hover over, and you get the intelligence right within. And uh, you can also like just open parenthesis. In this case, it's telling me, hey, this is of type name, uh, x string, and then it requires a reference that is a range type or a string address. And then there is this comment, which is um, you know, which is optional, so you don't need it. So this is like sort of a way to help people get used to uh, and discover APIs, um, even if you don't know how to like reference the documentation. Uh, and then we also add like code comment here to help you get started out with. So uh, it's pretty easy to uh, understand and explore and use. Uh, once you see the the script, it's quite uh, quite easy to get started out with. And I'll show the script that we used um, to, to to create the report that was sent over to Kay or, uh, or Adele in this case. I'm going to just remove this uh, comment and uh, uh, not fill it. So this is uh, the script, and you will see that parts of what this is built on um, is building on top of the, the recorded script. So the only things that I've added, I'm going to highlight a couple of things here. Um, so I, I, you know, Megan could go in here and like fetch the table uh, quite easy. It's synchronous API. As you can see, there is no promises, no context sync or anything like that. It's quite easy. You can just read through and understand this and add it for the checks like, hey, there is no rows to op you know, operate with. Just end it. Nothing to do here. Um, and then it goes and fetches the amount due. Um, and tries to compute like the highest amount, and then it goes and get fetches the invoice date. Uh, and then there's so like a, a bit of a logic here to traverse through here, um, and or rather here in the amount, and identify the highest amount. And then it says like a quick modification to the recorded code to say, rather than like applying a comment anywhere, go to this amount you column, go to this row that I've dynamically calculated to know what is the highest amount for, for review and include like, hey, you know, please review this amount, right? And there's the email address and all. So this code is a little bit hard even for me to understand, uh, but the thing is the recorder actually gave this code to you and I just know where to plug in. 
I just changed this hard coded address that the recorder provided and just added a dynamic row where I could just pl plug in the comment. So that's how it is sort of built like you know, layer by layer. It's very easy to test. And when our, you know, you can run it right from within the app here. When I run it, it goes through and adds the, um, or rather I should go here. Um, so yeah, so it added, um, you know, all the, the comment that you see here uh, and then the highlighting. So that was all done by the script here. It's pretty simple. The recorded script gave me like you know, 40 lines of lines. I added, you know, 20, 30 lines more and, and I have a, a working script. And then the really the kind of the cool part of this is um, heading over to power automation. So if you go to office, go into power automation. Um, so power automation is right here. It's this icon to so power automation. So here you can see that it offers a whole bunch of uh, ways to integrate with other parts of your organization. So I can create a new flow and say, you know, these are all like, you know, I can schedule. Um, ideally, Megan would schedule this, but I created an instant flow just to showcase. Um, so when I create a, a flow, you know, it gives you all these ways to trigger. You can say anytime a file arrives or um, when an email arrives or a Teams message arrives or a Power App submission happens or a Power BI button click, all of these are various different triggers that I can use. The one I've used um, here to validate that data that runs, let's say, once a night is just to run the script. So run script is a new action within Power Automation that you can say, hey, on this file, run the script. So this is the same script that I was just testing with. Uh, it's validate data here, and this is the same validate data script uh, that I use. Uh, so once you do this, you can go back in here. Um, you can trigger this. As you can see, I was testing it. It, it shows me what happened, failed or succeeded, uh, but I can just run it right from here. Um, trigger or once it runs, it completes, uh, and then it sends the email notification as needed. Right. The last part of the script is where the the chart was created. Right? So that was also another script. Megan has written here, which is to report. So all this is again a simple script that goes through, um, you know, performs the calculation, fetches the, the, the certain amount of data that you need, which is in this case, customer and amount. You creates a new worksheet, creates a chart, and extracts the images. The Power automation workflow that's achieving this is a different one. So this is email report workflow, and this is again can be set up to run on a month, you know, uh, daily basis at night. Uh, here I've created manually just to showcase, uh, and then again it runs on the same file. It runs a report images um, script, uh, which is another script, and all it does is extracts the the images and sends it over to an email send email action. Here you can you know pick the recipients you want, and then you can say hey, you know here is the format I need. Uh, so this is um, this is sort of the coded version, but you can also there's a plain text version of this, and this is the power of power automation. You can say the script is returning the image of a chart and a table image. Just insert it and save it. That's it. Uh, and then this report runs you know every night. Let's say once Adele completes her workflow, it'll come back and uh, email the report. So the handoff between Adele and Megal is all offline, right? So Megan didn't have to make a phone call or send an email. Once she set up this automation, the whole collaboration suite is now automated. And that's really the kind of the, the, the core value add um, that I'm trying to highlight here, which is that the script not only allows the, um, the person to actually come and automate here, but also you can plug that into as part of your power automation. As power automation framework grows, you get more and more ways to integrate across um, not just Microsoft. You can also use this to connect with something else. Like you know, you can have you know, Jira, for instance, or, or or like SurveyMonkey, Facebook, Slack, Twitter. Like that have a lot of services. I can see over 400 services that you can connect to. Um, so that's just a brief demo of how we enable kind of the. Uh, Adele's end user experience by doing automation beforehand, allowing Adele to finish her automation using guidance, and then on the tail end of things, picking up the completed work and then broadcasting the work out to the teammates. So that's sort of the like it's. I know it's a simple scenario. You're probably used to doing 
ton of more complex automation. But the purpose of this was to showcase that, hey, here are the ways in which you can connect parts of your application in a seamless way, in, in a seamless way with Excel without really having to get more subject matter expertise on other parts where you want to connect into and do it in a way that doesn't require you to like have a lot of um, uh, a lot of computer science background or a lot of programming skills. Office scripts is, you know, our goal is to offer a lot of ways so with through which you can like start small and really like build your um, skill set uh, as you continue to work with it. Uh, so I have a couple more slides. I'll finish with that and then uh, we can go back to the questions. One is um, uh, the um, yeah to, to get started like we have a couple of links here. Um, I'm sure we can find a ways to send this link over. I'll, I'll also submit. I'll also copy paste some of these links in the Teams chat. Um, you can head over to the Team uh, Add-in Store, acquire add-ins. Uh, as you saw within from Excel app, you can also go to the store and acquire and begin to use. There's tons of resources to get started. Uh, if you're interested in developing, there's a link there. Same thing with Office Scripts. Uh, if you have an O365 account, an Enterprise 3 uh, account, or if you have a dev tenant, you can use that as well. Uh, try, try recording, try building. Um, Power Automation is another easy way to get started out with for offline automation. Uh, and we have uh, like links and all of that uh, to help you get started. So a um, couple of uh, you know shameless plug on my side. So one is the um, I'm going to send over uh, the survey that I have. Uh, so this is a really a way for us to understand, hey, what are the different areas that you might be interested in automating? Uh, if you can find some time, it takes maybe two, three minutes. That'll be awesome for us to get your feedback around. Uh, it asks you a couple of questions around, hey, what are the features that you might be interested in automating? Uh, what sort of samples, examples they may want to see in the future? So that's one. Um, we are trying really hard to get the, uh, the community engaged and come along with us in the journey as we are in the preview stage. This is a great opp opportunity for you to kind of share your feedback and shape the product. Um, one of the ways in which uh, people have done that I wanted to highlight uh, is um, I think Leslie uh, Black. She's He's one of the uh, kind of the Excel and Office Script enthusiasts, if I can call it. So he's created this LinkedIn group where we, you know, post messages and information. You know, even today's meeting was posted. Leslie has himself has posted today. I think he's created a great tic tac toe game using Office Scripts with a video. So this is just to showcase that we like we are really passionate about engaging the community and getting your feedback. Um, and then we also have user voice support where we listen to your feedback. Um, there's also in-app feedback. So for instance, if you go here with an Excel, um, with an Office Scripts, uh, you, you can go click here and send feedback. And we look at that. For instance, I personally look at all the uh, issues that come up. So feel free to send your feedback, positive or negative. Uh, and then um, personally, I create this short videos. I have a YouTube channel of my own. Anytime people ask me a question like, hey, I don't know how to do this, I'll go and actually you know, create a short video. Um, and uh, if you have, you know, like if you're struggling with a scenario, this is one way for us to kind of tell you uh, like how, how, how to actually do this. So I'm going to send a link to the, the both the Teams channel, sorry, the, uh, the LinkedIn channel, as well as my YouTube channel to subscribe. Leave a comment if you need any more um, you know, samples and examples. We are like in the process of content creation as we uh, as we expand our feature set and try to complete the, the product feature set. Uh, and then lastly, I have uh, two uh, things. One is like the, the we have something called a user panel. So this is a way for you to get engaged with the products that you just saw today. One is um, like, you know, you can just scan this. Basically, it asks like, hey, can we uh, reach out to you if you want to get your feedback? Um, if you're an end user or a maker or office, you know, like if you're in the process of creating automation or if you're an administrator, this is a separate one. Um, and maybe can you can help us like how to get this uh, slide deck over to the participants. That'll be awesome. Um, and um, you can also scan the images right here. 
So I think that concludes the presentation. Um, we can take questions now, um, questions, comments. Cool deal. I'll answer your question first, uh, Sudi. If you want to email me the slide deck, we'll share it. That's not a problem. That part's easy. Just send me a note. Okay. Um, cool. And uh, I'm thinking, to be honest with you, I think most of the questions that I saw in this looked like they probably got answered, but I'm going to throw this out there for um, for anybody who is uh, um, is on the chat here. Uh, there is no better opportunity to ask any question you want of these guys uh, related to Excel because these guys are the guys that actually build the features on this one. So if there are things that you're you're looking for or uh, want to talk about or give your feedback, I know they would absolutely love to have it. Uh, we'll take it by chat or if you want to do the raise a hand um, and come off of uh, mute, we're happy to uh, to entertain them that way. Uh, Kevin, it looks like you may have unmuted. Do you have a question, my friend? Or maybe not. Nope, nope. <laughs> all right, there you go. Um, all right, you got some questions coming into the chat now, uh, Sudi. Um, where's the smart data type feature going? Something way more than Wolfram stuff. Um, you mean with respect to Office scripts or in general? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think we're going to try and keep these guys generally focused on the Office scripts and Office add-ins part. That's the part of the product that they focus on. So, Bill, uh, if that question was related specifically to the scripts, if you can clarify that one a little bit, uh, that would be great. Well, I can kind of maybe address the, you know, if it's in relation to Office scripts, it is something that we are working with the, the product team to give us the set of APIs in a way that we can automate it. Um, it is a fairly new feature, so the team is trying to polish their actual application and ship it to you know different platforms. Um, so the recording support, the API support uh, is going to follow. I don't have a timeline for this, but that's something we are working on with them. As far as the evolution of the that the smart data types. Um, more than the the you know the inbuilt one, uh, I don't know the details of that, uh, but I can probably provide an email contact for you to reach out to um, the PM that I work very closely with. Um, I think he'll be happy to address that directly. Uh, I will yeah, type. Perhaps you get Chris on here on a future meeting. Yeah, I think uh, that that's exactly who I had in mind. Um, so that'll be awesome to get him here if he's not already part of this. Uh, Eric, you've got a question. Hey, um, I have a question about um, if you have a script and it's embedded within a workbook, um, how, do, how does it work that you can uh, keep your scripts up to date uh, and shared among um, users within our organization? Yeah, so um, the scripts are not stored within the workbook. Um, so think of the script as something that lives elsewhere. Um, so at this point, we store the script on users uh, OneDrive for business, uh, but we are actively working on expanding that support to store that in a collaborative Steam site. Uh, it could be like a team site or, or any like SharePoint site. Uh, so Think of scripts as something that lives elsewhere, and then the, the, you can, as long as you share the the, um, the scripts or if you have access to the script, you can directly use that within your, you know, within your flow or directly within the Excel application. Uh, so um, the person who's authored or in charge of maintaining it would maintain that independent of any workbook that it may be getting used in. So if the workbook, if you make a copy of the workbook, is it still the same script? Uh, the script will not change at all. Like the, I showed you briefly, um, I can reshare again. So the script themselves are stored in a separate OneDrive folder, right? So here, let me go over this. So you see here I have six scripts. And when I go to Excel and I go to my all scripts, I'll also see one, two, three, four, five, six scripts. Um, so it is independently stored. Like uh, a user can go and operate on the script and modify, 
Um, but I can even open this on an, any other Excel file. It doesn't have to match. So I'll start a blank new file here and I can go to the automate tab and access the same scripts. Um, and I can access the scripts that I've created myself or the samples one, obviously, or anything that's stored and or pinned with this workbook. Um, and, and the part that we are enhancing the experience is to not just allow users to store in OneDrive, but you know, pick any of their you know, shared point site where they can uh, collaborate together. Um, so if you, but if you send that workbook to somebody else in the organization and it's, it's using a script that's in your documents folder, will they get the script as well or will they not have the script? Yeah, so whoever has access to the workbook will see that. Um, so, you know, for instance, if I've, uh, I've shared this workbook, now, if Adele on the other end opens the same workbook in this section, um, uh, she will see that hey, script four, four is shared with this. So wherever the workbook travels, the script, think of the script relationship travels, it, not necessarily the actual script itself. Um, so you can run that from wherever that uh, workbook can be opened in. Um, and then the part that we are doing is to, not just enable that through somebody's OneDrive business, like we want that script to be located anywhere in an uh, admin managed uh, team site and like a SharePoint. So as long as it's shared, as long as you're sharing the workbook through OneDrive, it, the script is being shared as well. But if you email, uh, if you email a file to somebody and they receive it, um rather than sharing it through OneDrive, does it well, lose that, it happens or that's well, right so if you email like so i can so the the script here right so when you open this is this is a custom format like there is no viewer for this yet uh but it is a custom format um it's really like it just adds some additional metadata the you could like email um, this particular file around and and the other person can receive and they'll create a separate copy of it, but you're really creating a whole new copy, uh, right? Um, and let's say Adele opens the same file store as long as it's stored in Office scripts, it'll show up on Adele's account, but those are now linked. So the whole purpose of sharing is to allow one person to create it and maintain it and the uh, rest of the organization or team to use it. Uh, by sharing the file individually, you kind of break that link, uh, but it is possible. Like you can, you know, share just yeah. the actual script content directly, but that's not something we like recommend or uh, advertise as such, uh, but it, there's nothing stopping one from doing it. Uh, so th think of this as like a V1 version. So in the next iteration we have, uh, additional capabilities um, where the same script can be sure, st stored not just in a user's drive, but in a collaborative site. So that helps reduce that sharing pain uh, that you may encounter today.